I'm Kamala Harris, as we all know, historically unpopular vice president. And it appears that even her most hardcore base, the K-Hive, is starting to turn on the vice president. Um, again, Kamala Harris is massively unpopular with the public at large, with most of the electorate, including Democrats. Um, but she has retained throughout the Biden administration this, you know, pretty hardcore faction of online uh, supporters that has been, you know, coined the K Hive. Right. This article from the Daily Beast goes into some details about how even some of those most loyal supporters are starting to turn on her. Let's take a listen here or take a look um, to those uh, to most. To, sorry, to most of those paying attention, Vice President Kamala Harris appears to have hit the skids. Her approval numbers are lower than President Biden's, as well as every one of her predecessors at this point in her in office. Her role has largely been limited to casting tie-breaking votes in the Senate or managing the administration's stalled work on migration and voting rights, none of which is helping in the polling department. Fellow Democrats have begun have begun openly fretting to each other and to journalists that she isn't ready to lead the party's national ticket. And at least one poll indicates that if a theoretical open primary were held today, she might command single digit support. And I can back that up with a poll that I just saw from California, where Bernie Sanders was uh, ahead of Kamala by like uh, significant digits. Uh, and, and again, she's from California, the sitting vice president, still losing her home state to Bernie fucking Sanders. So that's pretty insane. Uh, well, they may not be as rabid as they once were. Harris can still count on the backing of one bastion of supporters, the K hive years after the end of the knockdown drag out Democrat primary, the loose collective of digital warriors are still fighting on her behalf. And yet, according to some of the K hives leaders, the vibe has shifted since the heyday of the 2020 campaign, where Harris's fervently, sometimes recklessly devoted fans earned compliments from the campaign and requ requests for support from Biden himself. Um, the job of the vice president has always been to take on issues that may not be politically sexy or easy wins for the administration. She knows uh, that when she decided to accept the president's offer to join the ticket, said Chris Evans, um, who's been one of the most visible K-Hive members. However, I think even the vice president herself has admitted for the first year or so of her tenure, she's wanted to spend more time getting out into the country, being face to face with the American people. I'm consistently seeing people ask, where is Kamala? And, and that's a good question. It's like, you know, usually the vice president has a pretty significant role within the administration. And a lot of people under Biden specifically were thinking that, you know, because he's so old, uh, they're going to need a youthful uh, vice president to kind of be the real face of this administration to real, really inspire people. And so far, that has just not come to fruition. You know, Kamala is very rarely trotted out. Usually when she is, it's to read some scripted teleprompter bullshit, uh, because when it's not scripted teleprompter bullshit, um, it's usually a total embarrassment, a complete word salad. You know, we've reviewed so many clips on the show of her just unable to properly communicate in the most basic way. Um, so I think it's pretty funny that a lot of people are seemingly realizing this, even uh, even the K-Hive themselves, as this quote says, uh, I would never, ever regret supporting the first black woman vice president, but the disappointment is real. Uh, and that's from a self-described former member of the K-Hive who requested to speak anonymously so as not to alienate themselves from friends made through the movement. Um, uh, and then she says, I was obsessed with the idea of this person who could undo the systematic, the systematic racism and sexism and heterosexism in government with one fell swoop. And now I'm thinking to myself, did I just make up a person in my head who could do those things? Which, again, you almost have to it's almost kind of uh, charming how naive that is to think that one vice president could undo the systematic racism and sexism in government, even if it was like someone way better than Kamala Harris to think that a single vice presidential figure could undo all of the systematic like, you know, inequality in the country is absolutely insane, let alone to think that Kamala Harris, former top cop of California, would be that person. Uh, so needless to say, I think a lot of the K-Hive crew are coming to terms with just what a miserable uh, politician Kamala Harris has proven to be, what a, you know, uh, a terrible vice president she is. Um, what's your guys' reaction to all this? 
Well, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, as I, as I see that, I, I realize there's a lot of people waking up to the fact that, that when folks run for office, especially when they're locked into the two major parties like that, it's all about PR. It's branding. You fell for branding. You fell for no different than when you see the ads on TV telling you, hey, this bed is better than this bed. You know, it, it, that's all it is at the end of the day is pure branding. And so when the branding suddenly runs out, when the product because let's be honest, when, when those people are running for president, they're products, you know, they're, they're not really people trying to make it. They might believe they are maybe internally, but ultimately they're sold as products. And so clearly the product has not followed through with what was sold that it was going to bring you. And I think it was actually a pretty observant quote. And they said, mm, maybe I've made a little bit too much up in my head about what this person was as opposed to what they actually are, which we find we do that all the time in politics these days. It's all about like what I believe this person to be as opposed to what the nuts and bolts reality is of that person. Plus, let's be honest, but Kamala Harris hasn't done anything. It's true. Like she hasn't made even if even if you're a sitting vice president, which look even throughout the history of the country, the vice president's kind of up until dick cheney uh vice president has always kind of been more of a figurehead piece they're there to show uh solidarity with their party solidarity with the president and know that okay if something happens to the president we have this person waiting in the wings to really you know be able to carry that torch and so all their job has been until dick cheney was just to be that that kind of uh stability that that real stability that that uh you would want us, you know, that you want to kind of reassure you, hey, president can do what they want, but we know if there's a change, if there's a tragic transition of power between the president to the vice president, if God forbid that ever happens, somebody's there can carry those reins. Harris hasn't really done any of that. You know, she got one assignment, which was the border, and that's about it. And she hasn't really done anything there. She, you know, like you said, she kind of trotted out this, I'm going to be out in the country and really meeting with the real world people out there. I haven't seen her show up to anything. I haven't been paying attention, but at the same time, like I don't hear these stories of her hanging out at a diner in, in Kentucky or Kansas or Minnesota or Wisconsin, you know, really, you know, pressing the flesh and talking to people and seeing what their problems are to really get her out there. I say all that though, to say this, we're at the midterms. The, the, the next election is still two years away. The branding machine will kick in when they're ready for it to kick in. And all of the complaints you're hearing about Harris right now, if the gods of the Democratic Party suddenly decide that they want her to be the real candidate next, they will put the entire full billion dollar marketing industry of that party behind her. And we will totally forget because to me, this also smells of like, hey, we got a good story here. Look at the person who didn't really do a lot in the first two years and Biden's getting older, but then she's going to come on and they're going to call it the rebirth of Kamala Harris. And everyone's going to jump on board and say, oh, my God, look at how amazing she is again, because it's a, it's that kind of classic. You know, they want they, I think they might be trying to paint that classic story of like, oh, she kind of fell over the wayside, but now she can take control again. Yes. Look how powerful she is. And da, 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 da. A phoenix rising from the ashes. Yeah, I think that one quote that you read, Gavin, is so illuminating of the base of the Democratic Party, where you have that woman who says, I thought that, and, and this is so multifold, right? Because the whole idea about like liberalism is that like, you know, you shouldn't be defined by your birth, right? I thought like, it's like, oh, just because you're a, a black person that, that doesn't define you just because you're a woman that doesn't define you. But yet when they are making the sales pitch, right, all you are is reduced down to your identity, which I just think is so like just interesting. It, 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 it has some like oxymoronic like tendencies to it where it's just like, uh, all this person really identified with Kamala Harris was her external features. So I instead of like, you know, obviously it's, I, I guess it's, it's better to appreciate somebody for their like fucking background than just to like deride them or want to harm them. But it did still seem just as shallow. It was like you projected all of this onto the woman you admitted uh, because she was a black woman. Right. And you thought that, oh, this, uh, you know, black woman would go in there and change the game because she was a black woman. And, and you know, all of these different kinds of things paying absolutely no mind to her character, to her career, to everything that she's done. Um, and, and, you know, it really, it does go back to what you were saying about marketing, right? Uh, everything changed in the democratic primary or the democratic party, excuse me, uh, with the Obama campaign, right? Obama's campaign staff actually won two grand Prix awards, uh, in 2009, uh, for being the best advertisers in the world. They took home two awards, 
Uh, and and that, cha- that that was everything. It was like, oh, all we have to do is hire the best ad team, the best PR team who can sell this person. That's exactly what you were talking about, Tyrell. What's the story going to be here, right? Because it's not going to be this lady was deeply effective and she promised to relate to people, but she had to hire child actors to even make a fucking pitch about space exploration to a bunch of kindergartners, right? She couldn't even be nice and wholesome and show up to a class and be like, isn't space cool? It's like, no, we need professionals in here to react to this woman. Like fucking insane shit, right? Right. And I was looking up before this. I finally fucking found this, Gavin. I was looking at all of her polling from the 2020 Democratic primary. The best day for Kamala, as we all know, right after she slaughtered Joe Biden on the debate stage and we all thought he was done with. I was that little girl, the busing. It was a horrible look for him. And it was good night for Kamala. She shoots up to 15 percent. So she's never really sniffing the front of the pack. Uh, you know, Bernie, uh, you know, always comfortable ahead of her. She did look like she might be the challenger right to uh, Bernie at the time. Joe was not looking good. He was not at all formidable in the polling at that time, which I thought was crazy when i was looking back at it i was like holy shit this man recovered from so much in the polling um but then immediately after that like weeks later and then she's floating at under five percent by the time anything that really matters by the time that the fucking primaries are rolling around and so i did the math right if there's a hundred million people that participate in the dem primaries right uh at her best she like eight million of them 10 million of them thought that she, I guess 15 million if we're using that number thought that she was okay. Uh, but now the numbers dwindle to like, even by the time she's picked to be VP, she's already dropped out of the race. So there's no accurate polling. So you just kind of take whatever the average was when she dropped out. Uh, so like 4%. So 4 million people when you're the vice president, think you're like the one, of course, that's going to atrophy. Of course, that's going to be mostly just loud mouths who have projected onto you uh, because they, they have a fantasy about you. And that's not to say that all politicians don't have some supporters who just have a complete fantasy fantasy about them uh they do but when that's your only base um it, it just makes sense why the K hive was so prominent and pronounced at first. And then, you know, of course, as she gives them nothing to sink their teeth into, there's just no there there. So you can see the same thing with the Bernie Sanders, right? Bernie Sanders, look at Bernie Sanders movement in 2020 when he's running versus now, like Bernie's still there. He's still doing some things. Um, he's but, still beating her in the polls. Right. Well, but he doesn't have a nearly the fucking like, you know, um, energy behind him because he's not i mean part of that's because he's not running for any high office right now i guess kamala is not really either but you see what i i you just naturally you're going to get some drop off in the level of a fucking attention you're getting but because she had so little to begin with i just think it comes across as a massively extreme yeah and you'd think that being vice president would buoy those numbers massively you'd think that having that platform would make you a lot more popular again it's a pretty easy job all you have to do is like be likable uh uh-huh, and and it clearly she can't pull that off and zach you said that one quote was really like representative of the democratic Democratic Party uh, voter as a whole. I think there's another quote in here, which is equally representative. So this is a quote from Shante Barry, who's an absolutely insane person on Twitter and basically like the leader of the K-Hive. Uh, get it, check out her Twitter if you ever have a chance. It's a real hoot. Anyway, uh, this is her quote when asked about the disappointing nature of the Kamala Harris uh, vice presidency. She says, the last vice president was in charge of a public health crisis and see what happened. We have over one million people dead. Uh, so yeah, because Kamala doesn't have a 1 million body count, uh, she's somehow good. That's a, that's a very low bar, <laughs> you know, it, did it kill a million people? Well, I guess, I guess, uh, what are we going to do? Complain about it? Come on guys. Uh, so uh, again, this is the same defense you hear of Joe Biden from normie Democrat voters. Well, at least he's not Trump. At least he's not. Tr-. It's like, yeah, we get it. He's better than Trump. That's a very low bar, and it's not impressive to be better than Trump or better than Pence. Uh, And and again, I think it's pretty telling about the enthusiasm if they went from thinking she was going to change the goddamn world to saying, well, at least she doesn't have 100 million people dead. Uh, You know, at least she doesn't have a 100 million person body count. Pretty funny. Uh, And also, Tyrell, you know, you were saying that um, they're going to kick the branding into full gear and that they're still going to try to force her on us, uh, especially if Biden doesn't run again for reelection. And while I definitely think they're going to try, uh, I'm a little bit less optimistic about her chances because of one thing. There's a lot of other Democrats around the country that are vying for that office and they are waiting uh, for Joe Biden to announce he's not going to run again. And as much as Kamala will try to just kind of, you know, coronate herself and clear the field, um, I don't think it's going to happen. I think there's too many motherfuckers out there from Gavin Newsom to, you know, celebrities, uh, even people like that, billionaires, um, different governors around the country that are Ooh, fucking edge, edge. 
Buttigieg, you know, all these people that are just power hungry. Uh, they don't care about anything other than that. Um, and if they smell blood, they're going to get in that fucking race. And they know Kamala's weak. They know she's wounded. She's a fucking limping antelope. It's not going to take much to take her down. You know, even even with her being the first black female vice president, I simply don't think she's going to have a goddamn chance if there's an actual open primary, which, again, is not for sure. But if Biden doesn't run, I have a tough time, you know, seeing a reality in which she's able to overcome the competition. Yeah, she doesn't have the clout to get the coronation like Hillary. But what do you think, Ty? Well, I, I, I agree with you guys. And I also think that the I I still am going to be hard pressed to see them trying to run Biden again, because there's a certain point where even 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 the most ardent Biden supporters are, you know, you got to look at his age and, and you got to look at like where he sits uh i think that that party if they're remotely smart um and i'm not talking about like this in sense of like i'm talking about it clearly not in a a what's best for the country smart but in in their kind of in that kind of corporatism attitude pr thing that we're talking about that is our modern elections today and the and the people that run that and the democrats i think they're they're already looking at biden as a stopgap you know, they, they look at Biden as, all right, we, we put this guy in here. He's been a loyalist for all these years to this party, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we essentially, as when you mentioned those poll numbers for Biden, the reason he was president is because they all knew that he was going to be the guy. I think what really the primary was in 2020 was ultimately just, well, show us what you got for 2024. We all know secretly, much like Hillary was coronated in 2016, we all know secretly that Biden's going to be the guy. Uh, but whoever makes a big rumble in this uh, and whoever kisses the right amount of ass and, and take, you know, and says the right thing to our big corporate donors, well, they're going to be, you know, we're, that's going to you know, move the needle for us because you're shown off for what you can do uh, in 2024. Um, it, I would be shocked if Biden ended up being their nomination again. It just doesn't seem like it's on the table for him. I think he's purely kind of like we're, we're treading water with him. Uh you know, and and as as the years go by between and the two years go by, I think you're going to see the Gavin Newsom's, like you said, Gavin. I think like you're going to see the Newsom's. You're going to see Beto O'Rourke if he suddenly makes a big win in Texas. Surprisingly, let's say he does. Let's say he's able to to win governor. Every politician never, if if they're looking at higher office like that, they don't stay. They don't hang around and finish their job. They'll jump to the next one. And if he if he's able to beat the Texas governor, then you're talking about a guy who's got all the momentum and can beat Republicans. And you're going to see, they already tried to crown them early on because they're trying to crown anybody uh, in, in, in that 2020 primary to kind of see who could be the next big leader. And, and Biden eventually was kind of the guy they, they chose. I think they chose him early on and everything kind of see that regardless of what he was polling. Um, and I think that, yeah, coming up to the next round, I think there's a great point you made, Gavin, that there's, there's a lot of corporate Democrat heavyweights that they're awaiting to you know, give a crown to and anoint the next big thing, uh, and we'll see how that plays out. But but right now, if you were to ask me, I think probably Newsom's going to be a hard candidate to beat, given like what he's been able to pull off in California and his youth and like all of that. And he's a good corporate candidate to parade out there. You got a lot of good uh, PR stories you can use with him, uh, except for the fact that you know what his his ex girlfriend is now like married to one of the Trump. Yeah, kids, if I'm not mistaken. She's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a good tweet about Gavin Newsom. It was like Gavin Newsom feels like a, a president from like an early two thousands movie, like so you know, true. just some super <laughs> generic like Democrat president.